Hi everybody, I'm Sarah. Welcome to the Big Blue House Homestead. I came outside today to show off some of my other seed starts. Most of these are my brassicas, cabbages, cauliflower, collards, things like that. Uh, first things first, I gotta go collect some eggs because I haven't done that yet today. And I wanna bring you down to show you the garden. So if you're wondering why we call ourselves the Big Blue House Homestead, it's because I live in a giant Big Blue House. Easy as that, right? Yeah, so that's the Big Blue House. Sorry if the camera's shaky. I am not used to doing this, and I'm not one of those people who carry around selfie sticks, and that's what I have. So I'm working with what I have. But I have my two little greenhouses, and this whole table of ant-filled pots of trees and goji berries that need to get in the ground this year. And that's part of some of the stuff that's going to be going into the garden. Uh, garden space is actually on the opposite side of my camera right now, so we're going to head over there, and we're going to get the chicken eggs first. I have. 15 chickens over here, 14 hens, and a rooster. I also have my favorite rooster back there. You heard him cock-a-doodle do a second ago. Um, that's the first chicken we ever got, and he stays over there on his own. You hear it? It's starting. Somebody either just laid or is mad because they know I'm coming, and they're trying to pretend like they're still busy. But it looks like one of the Americanas actually laid because she's doing her little strut and her little coo-coo-coo-coo-coo noise. Yay, I did it. I laid an egg. So we'll come over here. This is my chicken yard. And yeah, I do have a lot of junk piles, but I think everybody does. But that's actually an old pool that we had. And when we used it prior to moving here, I saved the frame to use as a tractor. So all I do is put chicken wire around it. And then I can reuse it and then I take the chicken wire off and let the chickens go through and scratch all the grass up. I do need to mow because we had some rain and things are getting pretty tall, but that's all right. Not a big deal. But you can see some of my chickens. I have some leghorns and I have Americanas and then I have a few like these brown ones back here. I don't know what they are. I just bought them at Tractor Supply. They look like the Isa Browns, but I'm not sure if that's what it really is. And then I have some silver lace wine dots. Also, I have a few of those. I had a lot more chickens, but we've had some problems with neighbor's dogs and they're dwindling down quickly. So what I did was I bought this deer fencing. It's like a, a netting. Can you see that? I'm not sure if you can see it really well, but I bought this and we went through and we posted larger stakes that actually go all the way up. And I did two layers of this fencing so they can't get through the hog fence that's down at the bottom and they can't fly over here. I do have one leg horn that likes to jump over the coop. So I guess she flies the coop and she'll jump over. And yeah, that's a Spider-Man blanket. When it's cold, I put a little protection out and I use the Spider-Man blanket and we just take it down and reuse it. And I'll keep doing that until it falls apart because I don't have any kids that needed it and it was more beneficial to my chickens. So I'm gonna head in the coop and get the eggs and I'll show you what I have. Okay, so they're going back in. I guess they're laying more. I've only gotten five eggs so far. I usually get white and brown and green. And no, that was a chicken jump in the coop. Uh, she'll go back in. She usually does on her own. But I usually get, right now, since they've only been out for about four weeks, maybe, not even a month, um, I'm averaging seven to ten eggs a day right now, which is pretty good from 14 hens. I'm not sure if the older ones are slowing down their process or not i don't go in there to check to see all the time i don't see who actually you know lays but anyway i wanted to talk about the garden space when you look back here at these stalls i do have a bunch of fencing attached to it and i use that to trellis like my loofah gourds and some of my beans and some of my cucumbers i plan to actually trench out and you know till in front and add some extra rows and i'm going to add two more big plots over here but Brian's been out tilling today. <coughs> Excuse me, I have allergies. Being outside on a colder day doesn't help. Um, but he's started to till already. So I've got this plot. And then I have a cattle panel like 90% of the world has in their garden right now. And then I have another plot. He's only gone over them once. So he's going to go back through a couple times. And I still have time for all this to die down. Another cattle panel trellis, another big plot. Behind the logs back there, I have another huge area. And like I said, we're getting ready to extend out and put a, more, a couple more back here too. When you're looking over this way, you can see where I have my raised beds started. And I'll show you those. By the way, has anybody ever spent years finding the perfect egg basket? 
I uh, refused to give up and I kept going to thrift stores and I finally found a basket that I thought would be sturdy enough and I never even took the price off. But yeah, I went forever looking for egg baskets because I wanted to be that type of person that walked around with the pretty egg basket. All right, raised beds. I have right now four of them and we're getting ready to add another one at the end and possibly two more beyond that. And I do have two rows of paddle panels on here so that it's a full arch tunnel that goes between the two beds. I grew melons and stuff up these last year and squashes and this year I plan to do a lot of the same. My beds are full of weeds. Don't let anybody tell you ever that raised beds are better than in the ground because I have a hard time keeping these weed free. I actually hate coming out here. This would be the third time already this year since February that I have to weed and I am tired of dealing with it. On the other beds, I can actually just take my saddle hoe and run it over the top. But this one I couldn't because I have strawberries growing. I have all my strawberries in here and you can see they're starting to produce flowers, but you can't see them through all the weeds. All right, I'm gonna leave my basket of eggs and continue to show you what I've got going on. I do have some stuff growing still, not a whole lot. Um, my oldest son moved out last year in September and it kind of hit me a little hard. So I just didn't think to keep planting like I normally would have. So, you know, it is what it is. I think the deer have been coming through because my kale has been getting eaten now, but it's going to bolt anyway, so it's fine. I'll probably come out and harvest the last of this in the next day or so. And then I also have some onions that are growing over here that I left in from last season so I can have the greens and they were small, so I wanted to see if they'd get bigger. But yeah, you can kind of see where I started with the saddle hoe and see how much easier that is. And all I have to do is clean out this little far corner and I'm good to go. And by the way, don't judge me on the holy sweater. It's my favorite sweater. It's my work sweater. I wear it every time I come outside and it's a colder day. And that way I don't ruin a good one, but I've also probably had it for 15 years or so. <sighs> just what it is. Don't judge a person by their clothes because sometimes it's just because they don't want to throw away their favorite sweater. And I'll intentionally at some point show you when I fix and patch all the holes again. All right, we're standing in front of what I call my enclosed garden. You can see where there is a gate here. Well, the other side of the gate is right there. And the reason why that gate's here now is because the entire fence fell down. We had some really bad weather come through and I swear it was tornadoes and it just ripped us all out. Even with those posts being concreted in the ground, it still damaged all of my fence. We're gonna pull that all out and repurpose the latticing on it and probably build it like a bean arbor or something in that sense. And then I can not worry about putting it in a fence anymore. I can just call it the enclosed garden. I have a planter box up here that I already have a cage in because I didn't take it out from last year. And you can probably see my dead tomato plants in there. Um, I grew current tomatoes in there last year. It's my favorite spot to put them. And so all I have to do is clean this out and plant those as soon as they're ready. I have over in this section my compost bins and a big hill of dirt that I'm gonna add more to this year. And that's where I plant a lot of my watermelons. When we walk into the actual enclosed garden, like I said, I don't have a whole lot growing. I do have some stuff, but you can see where I've started putting up fencing. Um, this is actually just tomato cages. Uh, they're the foldable type and you can connect them to create squares. Usually there's triangle, but I just lay them out straight and stick them into the ground and use those to grow my peas on. Once the peas are established and grown, and it's time for their season to start dying off, when the peas start dying off, I then remove the plants, take the cages, and put them on the tomatoes that need them. So I can dual purpose that. But I have a large section here that I have tilled out. I have another section here that I've put fencing up that's gonna be for more peas. And that's tilled. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Seven plots that I put in here, as well as all the way around the length of the garden, which is where I grow a lot of my corns and stuff at. But when you're looking over here at this hot mess of an area, yeah, that's my collard greens. Uh, they're still edible, but they've all gone to seed. And if you didn't know this about collard greens, they don't just bolt like a cabbage where they shove the flowers straight out the top. They actually go all the way down in between all of the leaves. So I have all my collards that I have to go ahead and harvest and then I'm going to save all the seeds from 
because I'm adamant about saving every seed that I possibly can. I have another type of collard down here. I have no idea what it is because it came in the Georgia collard pack and that's not the same as everything else growing. So we'll see. But I wanted to show you my special plant in here because it's not something very common that people grow and I just thought I should share it because people are this year starting to buy these up. Um, I purchased them last year when they were just starting to come out and now they're all over the market. Everybody has these. So I'm gonna set up my camera in a different area and we'll talk about this plant. All right, this weird looking oddball plant right here is called a kaolette. It's been referenced in some catalogs as an autumn star. Mine just was put down as a kaolette. It's a beautiful plant. It's a cross between kale and Brussels sprouts. And I absolutely love this and will grow this every year. I actually grew this from last year and I harvested off of it multiple times. You can see this bare spot. That's where I took the nubs down too far. I broke the plant off way too far. Whereas you can see with this one, I have two that started beside the nub. So they reformed and started to grow again. I think that is an amazing plant. It's a non-stop producer and it's gonna continue and continue until I need to pull the plant. And I'll probably do that soon because this one's starting to go to seed. So I'll save the seeds from it. But not very common, not a very common thing at all. That's the actual killette itself. It's a little um, small sprouted kale, I guess that's the best way to put it. So it's basically like growing a miniature kale onto a Brussels sprout stalk. They're very sweet like a cabbage. They don't have that um, rough taste that, a rough texture that most kales have very mild. In fact, I picked a bunch the other day and ate them in a salad. I cooked a bunch for dinner the other night and I'm going to eat the leftovers for lunch, so I wanted to share that as well. I have four plants left. I had about ten and some of them got trampled by deer and I lost those and then a couple other ones just didn't survive very long. But yeah, that's your kaolette. But that's the kaolettes. Um, as the season moves on and I get the seeds off of those, I have others I've already started and I will definitely go ahead and pull those then when the other ones are getting bigger. But it's a multi-purpose, eat it fresh, snack on it in the garden, very bug resistant. I haven't had any bug pest issues, deer are not eating it, and they're really good sauteed. And I'll show you that. We're going to head inside and I'm going to have lunch. All right, so I'm in the kitchen. Uh, that's this room obviously, but I want to talk about the kaolettes because I showed you out in the garden what they look like and they're this little tiny nub of pretty purple kales. When you cook them though, they don't stay purple. Most vegetables don't. Um, let me try to get a, a nice big one out so we can really look at what it looks like. They turn green like a spinach and what's really nice about them is they have this crunchy texture here so it's really soft like a sauteed green would be and then you have this crunchy center, almost like a um, Brussels sprout with that. Sorry, I have to wash my hands. Um, but yeah, they're really nice, really sweet, really mild. And all I do, these were actually frozen because the last time I saved or harvested a bunch, I had too many to eat at once. So I just blanched them in hot water and then put them into cold water and then threw them into bags and froze them. And all I did was took them out, let them defrost on the counter, so that there wasn't a whole lot of uh, overcooking. You don't want to overcook your greens because then they just turn to mush. But I took uh, two pieces of bacon and chopped it up and sauteed it in a pan and then added in a big bag of kaolettes to it, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and just tossed them until they were all completely cooked all the way through. And that's what I got. It's yummy little kaolettes. So if you're looking at seed catalogs or at stores and you see anything that's labeled as kale et, K-A-L-E-T-T-E-S, I really recommend it. I highly recommend it because to me it is one of my favorite things that I've grown now. They're very easy, they're very disease resistant, pest resistant, and you don't have deers eating them. I have lots of deer in my backyard because I don't have a fenced yard. Well, I do, but it's not electrified. So I get a lot of deer, and this is one of the things that from tiny shoots to entire plants, they never touched. They never ate. So I'm going to sit down and eat lunch now because I am hungry and it is lunchtime and I have some leftover beef ribs and kaolettes to eat and some corn. Um, 
Yeah. And that's what I'm going to eat today. So I'm starving and I'm going to eat it. Because <laughs> that's what I'm going to do is eat my lunch. Anyway, i like to thank you guys for stopping by for this one. Just wanted to show you part of the garden. I still have more to show. And I will get to that in another video later. But today, I just want to talk mainly about the Kaolettes. And hope that everybody out there gives them a shot. Gives them a try. They do grow well in all the weather. Um, summer, they didn't bolt. And for some reason here now, because it's getting hotter, I think they've just come to the end of their time and they're starting to produce their seed. So, kale lets it is. Thank you guys for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.